Right now you're being robbed. You have no idea it's happening. Your home hasn't been broken into. Your car is right where you parked it. You may not even realize what you've lost for months. Someone has stolen your identity. Finding out you're a victim is only the first step. Now you must start the long process of recovering your identity and repairing your reputation. At least you're not alone. The U.S. Department of Justice reports over 11 million people suffer from identity fraud annually. Why did this happen to you? Chances are, it was someone you never even met. The more important question is how did this happen and how can you better protect yourself in the future? Identity theft is one possible criminal repercussion of an overlying concern. The issue of online privacy presents a problematic situation with no clear or singular solution. It affects practically everyone. Whether you use social media, online billing and banking, or just occasionally shop online, there runs a possibility that your actions will be inadvertently noticed, logged, or even influenced by other unintended parties. Equally as scary, even if you are extremely careful or even refrain from using the internet at all, other people may cause your privacy to be violated without your knowledge or consent. TCP IP protocol mentor Vint Cerf noted how social convention has yet to catch up with current online privacy concerns. People take their mobiles out to take pictures. They upload the pictures to a website or to Facebook. But other things may be in that picture which you had no interest in, but they're still there. Including people who might not wish to be visible in the place where you took the picture. But we put this stuff up anyway. Once the information is made available online, it can be next to impossible to remove it. In her book, Dragnet Nation, Julia Anguin mentions, If someone were to videotape my kids in public and post the video online, I would have no legal rights to have it removed. But if that video contained copyrighted music, the copyright owner would be able to get it taken down in a flash. We may not be able to completely protect our identity from outside influences. However, we can control how much exposure we add to it ourselves. When using any type of social service, make sure you have privacy settings established. Limit your contacts to people you actually know. Also, make sure whatever information you make available, you wouldn't mind still circulating the internet in five years. For those who completely forgo social media because of its security drawbacks, you may eventually have a viable alternative. The idea of a more secure, decentralized social networking system named SafeBook has been proposed. When making transactions online, make sure you have a secure connection by looking for the HTTPS and stay on the lookout for phishing schemes. Don't share too much information. When registering to a new website, don't provide non-required information. When considering what to make public, a little common sense goes a long way. Be cautious about what you click and where you visit. Don't download anything that doesn't come from a source you trust. In the end, there is only one surefire way we can safeguard personal information. If you absolutely do not want the information made publicly available, do not post it online. The digital age has brought us a formerly unseen era of convenience. It is our task to make sure the cost is not our personal privacy. As best surmised by Benjamin Franklin, it takes many good deeds to build a good reputation, and only one bad one to lose it.